Introduction to Traffic Patterns Airport traffic patterns are developed to ensure that air traffic is flown into and out of an airport safely. Traffic patterns are a rectangular course pilots follow when departing from, returning to, or staying within the airport environment. In other countries, traffic patterns are often called circuits. Each airport traffic pattern is established based on the local conditions, including the direction and placement of the pattern, the altitude at which it is to be flown, and the procedures for entering and exiting the pattern. It is imperative that pilots are taught correct traffic pattern procedures and exercise constant vigilance in the vicinity of airports when entering and exiting the traffic pattern. Legs of a traffic pattern. There are six legs or sections of a traffic pattern. The departure leg of the traffic pattern is a straight course aligned with and leading from the takeoff runway. This leg begins at the point the airplane leaves the ground and continues until the pilot begins the 90 degree turn onto the crosswind leg. The upwind leg of a traffic pattern usually flows parallel to the runway of the opposite side of the traffic pattern. This leg is often used when a pilot does a go around so they can avoid any traffic that may be departing the traffic pattern runway. The crosswind leg is the part of the rectangular pattern that is horizontally perpendicular to the extended center line of the takeoff runway. The downwind leg is a course flown parallel to the landing runway, but in a direction opposite to the intended landing direction. This leg is flown approximately half a mile to one mile out from the landing runway and at the specified traffic pattern altitude. The base leg is the transitional part of the traffic pattern between the downwind leg and the final approach leg. The pilot should establish the base leg at a sufficient distance from the approach end of the landing runway to permit a gradual descent to the intended touchdown point. The final approach leg, often just called final, is a descending flight path starting from the completion of the base to final turn and extending to the point of touchdown. Standard and non-standard traffic patterns. There are two types of traffic patterns. A standard traffic pattern, also referred to as left traffic, is when all turns in the traffic pattern are made to the left. A non-standard traffic pattern, also referred to as right traffic, is when all turns in the traffic pattern are made to the right. Pilots must refer to the chart supplement, sectional chart, and air traffic controls directions to determine if a standard or non-standard traffic pattern is appropriate. Traffic Pattern Altitudes Traffic patterns are generally flown at 1,000 feet above ground level when in propeller-driven aircraft and 1,500 feet above ground level when in large and turbine-powered aircraft. At New Smyrna Beach Municipal Airport, where Epic Flight Academy is located, the traffic pattern is conducted at 800 feet above ground level. Entering traffic patterns. Procedures when entering a traffic pattern are based on if the airport is controlled or uncontrolled. When entering the traffic pattern at an uncontrolled airport, the pilot has two options. The first option is known as a 45 degree downwind entry. To conduct a 45 degree downwind entry, the pilot must maneuver the aircraft so they enter the downwind leg at a 45 degree angle while flying towards the approach end of the traffic pattern runway at traffic pattern altitude, or TPA. The second option is to cross over the midfield or center of the traffic pattern runway, perpendicular to the downwind leg, at least 500 feet above traffic pattern altitude. Note, if large and turbine aircraft are conducting the traffic pattern, pilots should fly over the midfield at least 500 feet above their traffic pattern of 1500 AGL. Next, the pilot flies clear of the downwind leg by approximately two nautical miles. Then, the pilot makes a descending turn opposite of the traffic pattern direction and enters the downwind leg at a 45 degree angle flying towards the approach end of the traffic pattern runway at traffic pattern altitude. When entering the traffic pattern at a towered airport, the tower will give the pilot specific directions on how to enter the traffic pattern. They may have pilots make a straight in approach on the final leg or enter on the crosswind, downwind, or base from the left to the right based on the aircraft's position to the airport environment. It is vital that the pilot be situationally aware of their position to the runway in use so they can properly join the traffic pattern on the leg the tower directed them to. Departing traffic patterns. 
When a pilot is ready to leave the traffic pattern, they should plan on departing on the departure or upwind legs. At uncontrolled airports, pilots should depart straight out or make a 45 degree turn towards the direction the traffic pattern is being conducted. At towered airports, the controller will have the pilot depart the pattern based on the pilot's desired direction of flight after leaving the pattern or traffic in the traffic pattern and in the nearby airspace. Using wind indicators and segmented circles to conduct a traffic pattern. It is important that the pilot visually checks the wind indicator both when deciding what runway to land on and while on final approach to determine the appropriate wind correction for landing. Wind indicators are usually located near the center of the airport or near the approach ends of runways. There are three types of wind indicators that pilots must be familiar with. Wind socks, wind tees, and tetrahedrons. Wind socks or wind cones show both the wind direction and wind velocity. The narrow part of the wind sock points in the direction the wind is blowing. If the wind sock is straight, this indicates the wind velocity is strong. If the windsock is sagging, this indicates that the wind velocity is low. If the windsock varies from straight to sagging, the pilot knows the winds are gusting. Windsocks can be rated for different wind velocities. For example, a 15 knot windsock will straighten out with winds equal or greater than 15 knots. Wind tees and tetrahedrons can swing freely and align themselves with the wind direction but do not show the wind velocity. The tail of a wind tee will point in the direction the wind is blowing. The larger triangle of the tetrahedron points into the wind opposite of the wind direction. Segmented circles, usually located in the center of the airport surrounding a wind indicator, also helps a pilot identify what direction turn should be made in the traffic pattern for a specific runway. The traffic pattern indicators located outside of the segmented circle represent the base and final approach leg of the pattern. The pilot can review the traffic pattern indicators before entering the traffic pattern to ensure they are conducting the appropriate turns per that runway's traffic pattern. For more information on traffic patterns, please refer to the Federal Aviation Administration's Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 7, Airplane Flying Handbook, Chapter 7, and the Aeronautical Knowledge Information Manual, Chapter 4, Section 3, Part 3.